Welcome to Instruction Discussion, our weekly look at the latest topics and trends in education affecting schools here on Long Island and schools around the world. Whether you're a teacher, parent, or student, listen for tips and strategies to help you navigate the educational landscape. There's a bell. It's time to start today's instruction discussion on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Hello, I'm Kevin Boston Hill, and welcome to Instruction Discussion, where each week we will examine a recent trend or development in education and its impact on Long Island. During this time of distance learning and social isolation, one thing that has become clear is that many of our students did not adjust well to the new environment. Now more than ever, social-emotional learning, or SEL, is a vital component of a student's daily routine. Having a trusted person to do regular SEL check-ins will go a long way to helping students adjust. Today's guest has been a mentor to students for over 10 years, providing space and opportunity for them to check in. He has developed the RISE Mentorship Academy to serve as an additional arm of support for schools to educate the whole child. Let's welcome to our class today, Mr. Sean Mason. Mr. Mason, welcome to Instruction Discussion on 90.3 WHPC. How's it going? How's it going? Everything is going great, great. But, you know, so before we actually delve into today's class, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. How, how and why did you get into education? Well, I got into education um, actually on a little by accident. Um, I was a student at Morgan State University, had graduated with my degree in psychology. And um, like most kids, didn't want to go home. So there was an alumni who was a principal at a local school in West Baltimore. So he came to the school and was looking for some people just to run a, a camp just for kids or whatever the case is. And so started running the camp, which was located at the School for the Arts and um, working in the camp or whatever. And the uh, one of the counselors there who was a longtime educator, she was like, you know, you have a knack for just working with kids who come from hard to reach areas. That's how she put it. So from there, it just began, it, it began there. And then I actually graduated and got a job. So I was like, hey, I cannot go home and have a job. And it was actually in the middle school. So that really kind of um, started my whole tutelage and, or, or journey in education. Full disclosure, we, we actually run in the same circles and being both in education and uh, being in the same fraternity, Cap Alpha Psi. So I'm very familiar with a lot of the work that you do with in mentoring and so forth. So talk to me t- and tell us all, how important is mentoring in the academic achievement of our students? Mentoring is very important. Um, I would say that it, it's it's very it's as important as, as education and the academic part because a lot of kids now who are coming from so many different types of homes don't have those people who are helping them to have those personal skills. And that's where mentoring kind of helps a person along. So if you see two kids who are in, a, in, in school or whatever, and even though they might have the same makeup of a family, it's what's going on in the family that's actually helping those kids to be successful along with the education. So therefore, especially if you're a kid who's not doing well in certain areas academically, you might need, you know, some, some kind of coaching that's going to help you with your, per, with your personal skills that are going to help you to enhance your education. So mentoring is very important. Got it. And, and I guess with that mindset, that's kind of what led you to develop the, the Rise Mentorship Academy. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, Rise Mentorship Academy came from just kind of taking a look back at, at what has made me to be able to have a lot of opportunities in life, coming from different circumstances. You know, I'm from South Jamaica, Queens, from a single parent home, but my mother was always very strategic in making sure that there were positive role models, male role models that were, that looked like me who were doing various things in various fields. And so I kind of had to sit back and realize that while as I'm in college in my sophomore year and realizing that, you know, I came from very humble beginnings, but I'm actually sitting at a historically black university. I'm matriculating. I'm doing well. I'm, I'm learning things like networking and, and all of those things. And those are the things that keep, when you look at successful people such as Reginald Lewis 
or you look at um, the late John L., you know, the congressman, John Lewis. So those are things that are very key. You can't, in order to grow and be successful, you have to be able to step outside of your box. You have to have a great network. You have to be able to talk to people. So that's public speaking. And, you know, so all of these things are confidence builders where, and then I, I realized that where life is going to happen to you and you have these multitude of skills, then you really can't be worried because even like today, who would have thought six months ago when we were sitting in January to my great 2020, you know, let's, let's go. Where do we go? You know, so, yeah. and it, this had, that there has to be a shift. And, and even in, you know, things that are going on now, it, we're having to shift. So people are panicking because, you know, they, they are either not prepared or, you know, are either you're prepared to make a shift. So that's really the basis of Rise, of, of wanting to give young men opportunities to be better versions of themselves. Great. And what do the, the letters Rise stand for? Well, Rise stands for Reaching Individual Student Excellence. It's like, it's, it's, it's sort of like, if I could use some, some educational pedagogy, it's like a, um, an IEP for mentoring, which if you know, and I tell people all the time, the good thing about special education is that it's, it's nothing to be ashamed of because if you really look at it, it's really strategic because it's, it's actually detailing a detailed plan for you and your educational process. So you should think about that when you think about how you want to evolve and change in life. So you have to make some sort of roadmap or, or, or plan. And, and not to say that it's going to be something that's etched in stone because here again, life is going to happen and things happen. So you have to be able to be flexible with that. But in order to just realize and make some sort of plan or some sort of sketch outline of things that, you know, you want to achieve, then you know, that that's, I think, one of the greatest tools to begin. I like the way you put that. It's a, an IEP for mentoring, that individualized educational plan for mentoring, because every student is going to need something different in order for them to succeed. And you, so there's no one way that you can do things. Even if you brought in five or 10 young men who had extremely similar backgrounds, they all come from single parent households, they all are in the same class in school and so forth. <laughs> they still need something a little bit different than the person sitting next to them if they're going to succeed because their their hopes, their dreams, their aspirations are going to be different. And so, I mean, I know everybody wants to be a basketball player or a rapper, but beyond that, their, their aspirations are going to be different. And so how we nurture those aspirations is going to be different. And, and the people we put in front of those young men is going to be different as well. Exactly, which is why it's very crucial, very crucial, because no two people are alike, and that's what, you know, the basis of it. So then if we know that mentoring, even at the elementary and middle school level, is so important for to the success of our students and to um, working with the, the whole child, educating the whole child, what can schools do to incorporate mentoring um, into their schedules? <laughs> So this is, this is the caveat, and this is another reason why I, 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 I go so hard when it comes to RISE, because principals have to understand and buy into the fact that this is not an after-school program, this is not something on the weekends, that this is something that has to be embedded five days a week during the school day. It, it has to be, because if you're dealing with so a myriad of other things. And then when you talk about after school time, I mean, let's be realistic. Who wants to go to school all day you, it, with, with the strenuous academics that, that kids are, you know, the rigor of academics that we're going through now, which is, you know, we want our kids to be global competitors. So that's, that's fine. And then after school, if you're taking the time to do this, so now you having a kid that's frustrated because, Outside of school, now they, their time is further structured, you know, and, and so the kid is now like, yo, I have no time for myself. So the buy-in for principals have to be that this is what replaces mentoring. And, and, and I don't even, I like to loosely call it mentoring, but leadership development has to be um, interjected during the day because this is something, first of all, you need that time to be able to get to all of the kids. And it's not a cookie cutter program. So therefore, it's something that's going to take a 
of variations of things depending on the kid. And not only that, now you're looking at, you are a person that has to work hand in hand with the guidance counselor, with the teachers, with, with you know, so now you're, you're, you're an added layer of support that's actually, that actually has the time because your case, well, your load of children might not be as large as what the guidance counselor, or you are able to do things that, that are not so, um, a good word that I, I'm, that is not so traditionally, you know, traditional within a school setting that that's going to catch these kids. And, and that's the good thing about, I think, a good mentoring program it has to be innovative. It has to be something that is going to grasp these young men and young ladies, if that's the case or whatever, and something that's going to actually wholeheartedly speak to them and who they are and how they can actually use this information to change the trajectory of their lives. You are listening to Instruction Discussion on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. My name is Kevin Boston Hill, and our guest today is Sean Mason, founder of Rise Mentoring Academy. So le- let me uh, ask you this then. If you want to have different people come in, well, I guess the, the ba- basic benefit of having a mentor or a group of mentors coming in during the day is you're providing additional advocates for that student, for, for those students, because now that's a, a, an individual, an adult that they can trust in who's going to be able to um, advocate for them and, and kind of look out for them during the course of the school day as far as finding out about different uh, grades that they may have gotten or the projects that they're working on and, and um addressing those needs where a parent may not be able to, where a guardian may not be able to, where again, and students are confided in their teachers all the time, but there are certain things that they can't go to their teachers for because they may feel embarrassed about talking about a grade, but they'll talk to their mentor about it. And then the mentor can have that conversation with the, with the teacher. So I guess that's why it's, it's, important to have that relationship throughout the course of the day rather than in an after school or a weekend program. Exactly. Because it allows you to that time to build that. You need to build that trust. You need to build that, that genuine relationship with the kid and that, you know, that that's a through a variations of different things. So it's very crucial that it's, it's embedded during the day. So, okay. So now we know that, And I'm sure it's a no brainer to most people listening that mentoring, it's a great thing and we can do it during the course of the day face to face. But in this day and age that we're going through right now, everything is distance learning. It's it's over Skype or Zoom or whatever you're doing. But how can mentoring now support students or even schools use mentoring in a distance learning environment? Well, the distance learning environment has actually um, been very good for for this 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 type of programming because before when you were trying to do the well in, in before in doing the face to face trying to schedule people who are all over and you know doing different things is is really hard. Now the the great thing about this whole virtual thing is that. Everybody is really sitting around or is, is easy accessible now. So, and those people who have achieved a certain level of greatness or, or, or success really want to give back. And they, they didn't know, you know, some people are really shaky about doing in-person things. So, you know, along with that, but now it's opened up this, this large, just cornucopia of just people who want to sow back and and especially in the climate of things that are going on in the country and, and where we are right now, I think a lot of people see that we got to sow into these young kids and we have to give them um, skills and strategies because if not, and, and, and if not, then that's going to be a problem because this is the next generation. It, it's, it's not really about us. It's about empowering our young people so that they have the tools and the skills so that they can, we can never go back to the status quo of what was. And we all know that that's what, you know, is the, the climate of, of, of the, the, the country at this time, especially for, for brown people, for anyone who, you know, so we have to, you know, it's, it's very crucial. And it, the, this whole digital age has just made it 
it's far more accessible to people and, and people want to reach out. So that's, that's actually a good thing. So, so at this time, I would say, you know, it's, it's great that schools can actually capitalize on that because, well, you know, hey, you can get an NBA player or, 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 or a CEO and, and from various fields because we want to show our kids that whatever your dreams are, you can accomplish it because you, you don't want to, you know, kind of railroad a kid and steal them, you know, so that's not fair at all. So allow them to be whatever, but show them these people and, and have these real conversations as to what it is that you need to be doing on all levels. Because I think sometimes, especially for our kids, when they look at ball players or they look at, you know, people who are in the music industry or whatever the case is, they really don't understand the ethics and the sacrifice that goes behind all of that stuff. They just see this end product. And so, you know, for that one end product, they're like 500 million that are just like sitting chilling because they really didn't have a, a work ethic. So, or things just didn't, you know, kind of line up. Right. So you mentioned that you went to, you attended an HBCU, which Morgan State is, um, and there are a lot of HBCUs around the country, as well as other regular colleges around and universities around the country as well. And so I'm guessing that you use a lot of the relationships that you built at during that time to to kind of reach out to those people for to be speakers. And it makes it easier, as you mentioned earlier, in this distance learning format, it actually makes it easier for those individuals to come and speak to your group because they can be anywhere in the country. So now you don't have to worry about coordinating schedules. Like, well, I'll, I'll be in New York during this weekend to maybe catch me for, for a couple of minutes here or trying to fly somebody in from wherever they are. They can literally be in another country or another state and kind of just block out about 45 minutes to an hour of their time and talk to your, to your students. So t- talk to us a little bit about that. What kind of, of those connections have you have you made with your young men that you work with? Well, um, yeah, I've used a lot of my, my Morgan State connections. And, and you know, with that, um, just recently, the young men were able to to participate in a great discussion with um, with with a young friend of mine, Greg Arsenis Green, who's a multi platinum producer for Jim Jones and Cameron. So, and even in giving them those jewels and and actually taking on two of those kids who want to you know learn more about how to be an entrepreneur. Outside of that, um, and one of the greatest things that that I think going to Morgan State and just an HBCU gave me is the power to understand that networking is key. So. With that, even all of the dope connections that I made at Morgan with a lot of people who are entertainers and, and just in various fields of government and things of that nature, it allowed me to have the confidence to and the skill set to to keep networking. And fortunately, I was able to also network and work with an organization that's called the National Minority Supply Development Council. And what NMSDC is, is all of the minority businesses um, in the country and, and around the world. So that then opened up a whole nother side with, with I'm in, in rooms and meeting people like Magic Johnson and, 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 you know, and so that, that then when you talk about business and entrepreneurship and minority ownership, so now that adds a whole nother layer because I'm now have people who like Harry and Michelle, who's the past president of the, um, of, in of, NMSDC, as well as the Urban League, as she's a freedom fighter from civil rights. So she's sewn into these kids as well. So that's political activism. So it just it just allows you to make these connections, and which is very crucial because these kids come away with such a wealth of knowledge, and they're like, "Wow, I've learned things that that you know they're like I've never even learned in school," and and I feel a lot better about even myself, or I I, I see a lot clearly now, or why. I should do X, Y, and Z, or, you know, what's the benefit of, you know, just going downstairs, like um, Greg was telling him, listen, you're always going to be your, your worst critic. And so you have to make sure that you outwork the next man. So that that's what success is. If you want something, you have to make sure you're outworking the next person. Another one of my great, um, great mentors that I've been fortunate to meet is Bob Sumner, who is, who is a person who's into t- in entertainment, but is the godfather of founding comic legends like Bernie Mac and, and you know, Def Comedy Jam. That's his whole thing. And he still does things to this day. He He's the um, coordinator for the Apollo and he runs programming for Aspire TV. But 
still entrepreneurship. And that's, that's something that's been along the, you know, the gamut. So, you know, the, those are the, the great connections, you know, and especially, and then you have great people who, even though you did, they didn't go to Morgan, however, just cross from HB, other HBCUs that, that pour into kids. So it, it's, it's the greatest thing, you know, that, that whole connection. No, it, it does. It sounds amazing. And I'm sure our, our listeners are sitting here, sitting around thinking the same thing. So, well, that sounds like such a great program. And I think, why can't we do that in our schools and so forth? So what what can schools do? How how can schools reach out to you and bring Rise Mentoring Academy into their schools? Well, what schools can do is they can um, email me at risementorshipacademy at gmail.com. We have a website, www.risementoringacademynyc.com, and to send me a link, and let's see how we can make Rise work for the kids in your community to make them to be better versions of themselves. Now, of course, the, the website has NYC at the end of it, so it is, I'm sure it's more New York City based, five borough based, but what if there's a school in Nassau County or Suffolk County and says, you know what, we have, a, we have a need for that type of program as well. Do you travel? Oh, I travel. It's and and the greatest thing with with the the new virtual age is that I do virtual. So it, it's that's just the the web address, you know, because I'm based here in New York City, but I am global. I am I am across the country. This is not anything that we can contain because you know you can't contain a good thing. So it is not specific to the five boroughs. It is across tri-state area and across the country. You are listening to Instruction Discussion on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. My name is Kevin Boston Hill, and our guest today is Mr. Sean Mason, the founder of Rise Mentoring Academy. So we mentioned early, really early on in the beginning of the, the broadcast, um, we talked a little bit about or mentioned a little bit about the activism, and you talked about it here as well. So how should schools address the current climate that we're in as far as uh, Black Lives Matter and any and some of the other issues that are facing our communities? How should they address that with their students? Uh, I think that they should start with with simply a town hall meeting and, and, and engage where their young people are. There's a lot going on. Our, our young people are dealing with just mental issues because we've been contained for so long on with the pandemic on top of, you know, the racial climate that's going on. And for a lot, for, for many of our kids, the lack of education and understanding of just, just our people in the struggle. So I think this is a very, while it's a very turbulent time, it's a very um, extraordinary time, especially for educators and for those true educators and those, those true people who want to have great teachable moments to, to evoke change. So, you know, it, it's, it's really what that is. Understanding that it's so crucially important to be actively involved. And, and where does that start in elementary school, just in being on student council and things of that nature. Like these are the little things that help to build those characters by not just sitting in the back of the class, sitting in class and actually being present and, and, you know, no matter that, you know, you, you play ball or whatever the case is, being that, that person who is actively involved in a lesson, you know, so things of that nature. And, you know, so that's, that's really, really that not kind of shying away, you know, being very confident in who you are and, and just exuding your self-confidence, but not, you know, being very respectful of other people. So it, it's, it's in that, I would say that, you know, take that time see where young people are, allow them to express themselves and, and, and really help them to strategize and put together plans that even at their, whatever, wherever you are in your school or wherever they feel that they are, so they can feel as though that they're actively doing something, get them involved in, in the political process of getting the, your local Congress or assembly person to come, you know, and what, even if it's on a zoom or whatever, I mean, listen, everyone's available so that they can have these questions and, and have this dialogue, you know, because I think a lot of it is that, you know, while we sit and we talk, you know, kids have opinions too, and they, they have feelings and they have, you know, expression. So it's very vital that their, their point is heard and that we make a, a platform so that they can be heard and that they can do things to, you know, to be heard. And I think one of the things that you do well uh, through 
rise or even just in uh, mentoring in general is providing that outlet, providing that opportunity for students to be able to have that check-in and so that you find out from them how they're doing and, and not even just from an academic standpoint, but from a, from an emotional standpoint, because as you mentioned, this whole pandemic thing has really shut down a lot of people because they're, they're isolated. They're stuck indoors. They, they don't get to do the things that they would normally do as far as hanging out with friends and so forth um, in, in public or in person. So they, it, it took the, the, the introverted person, made them more introverted. It made the extroverted person and put them on a, on a field that they're totally unfamiliar with. And so from when we were in schools, at least, you could see people. You could see the, their demeanor. You could see their body language. And you can kind of get a, get a gauge of how they're handling things. Now you can't do that so much. So I think hat, providing the opportunity to check in and to have students kind of give their um, talk about how they're doing is, is very important. I think you do a really good job with that. Thank you. So let me a- ask you this. Um, we know that distance learning is probably going to be here to stay either distance learning or hybrid learning or something along those lines. And unfortunately at this point, it's also widening the achievement gap. So how can, where can mentoring fit in to help to close that achievement gap again? Here and again, like I said, it, it can help to, to link those kids to skills that are going to help them to be confident in their education. Everyone is not a 100% academic person. So when, when we look at the things that have been taken out of certain schools, when you look at equity, depending on where you are and what monies your schools have, then that's where you get those, 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 um, those issues. And so it can serve as a supplement to help those kids, like I said, to, as a support system, because there's something I think that there's not one person that doesn't want to be successful. They just don't know how. And if you don't know how, it's because either you've not reached out or someone has not noticed that you are in need of help. So therefore, that's what great mentoring and leadership development does. It kind of helps to, you know, when you need it, helps you over those hurdles. And so if you're stuck constantly in a hurdle and you're just spinning your wheels, it's, it's not good. And so what happens is, you know, you get in this whole state of depression and that just, you know, carries on to a whole bunch of other things. So it helps as a supplement to help those kids to be confident or to help them to figure out what it is and how it is that they need to move forward and which helps their education. Well, we'd like to thank our guest today, Mr. Sean Mason, founder of the Rise Mentoring Academy, for stopping by our class and, and spending a little time with us today. Thank you. Thank you. And once again, provide your the, the website information, how they can get in contact with you. You can email me at risementorshipacademy at gmail.com. Or the website is www.risementorshipacademynyc.com. Great. Well, once again, my name is Kevin Boston Hill, and thank you all for listening to Instruction Discussion right here on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC.